Hey guys, with everything going on in the world, more and more of us are working remotely. I've actually been working remotely for like nine months now, so um, it's uh, it's one of the better things about my job, in all honesty. I, I love it. You can see, like, this is my office. I have my dogs that jump back and forth in the background of the videos. They're sort of the, the unofficial staff members of my team uh, at times, but we're going to talk about not only remote work but also some tips i have for you to be successful in it because many of you are going to want to continue to work remotely at least some of the time and um, you know now is a good opportunity to prove that you can still do your job and do it well from the comfort of your own home or wh whatever it is and most of us aren't going to go back into the office and you know everyone's going to have you know a couple days remote but there's a good portion of people who can take this opportunity, excel in it, and then find a way to take your five days in the office role down to three days in the office or four days and still just have that one remote day. And I think it will really help you guys enjoy your career a little bit more. So we're going to talk about some tips I've used to make sure that I've been an effective remote worker. <laughs> I'd like to take a moment to thank our long-term sponsor, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. I've been partnering up with Dev Mountain for a couple of years now, and I've had the chance to see multiple campuses and housing. I've been really impressed. Dev Mountain has a couple different programs from web dev to iOS development, software QA, and UX design. Some are after hours part-time programs, and some are fully immersive programs where they actually include housing at no additional cost so you can get up and go. If you're interested in finding out more, there's a link in the description below. So working remote, 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 oh my goodness, working remote can be sort of strange at the first bit that you're using it. I, I know a lot of people, and myself included, when I first started re working remote is I felt like I had to be at my computer 100% of the time. Like, I went to go get a cup of coffee downstairs, I'm like semi-speed walking, and I speed walk back up. Um, that's an unhealthy attitude to take, and I think it's honestly going to make you more stressed out long term. It's okay to step away from your computer for 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever it is, whatever is going on in your life. Um, you know, for me, I probably take uh, four or five walks in an average workday around the uh, around the community, each one about 15, 20 minutes. I'm, I, you know, I work, I hit my little my little feature, my point milestone, and I go and I, I unwind for a second. I, I go, which would be the equivalent of a smoke break for some people, or it would be the equivalent of, um, you know, going to the, you know, the water cooler and um, getting something to drink or the snack bar, whatever it is. You know, these are all sort of equivalent things you would do in the office, right? So you want to avoid that because it's going to be very stressful. The next thing I would tell you, uh, and this is a general thing, I would do this if I was in the office or outside the office, is I wouldn't have communication devices on me at any time. And what I mean by that is, so often, one of the things you have to avoid, wor uh, avoid especially with working remote, is that you're always on. Like, there's this, like, when your home becomes your place of business, your place of work, it's, it's a very dangerous thing to always be on. It's a very dangerous thing to, you know, and it's a natural tendency because you now live and work in the same place and you have to make sure you don't make that mistake. So um, one way that I do that is I take my laptop every day and I put it up into that, that closet there on the top of the shelf. And when I go work tomorrow <laughs> or when I go right here to this chair tomorrow, I take it off the shelf. I put it back there. Now the cords are all out and everything, but it's more of a, um, a mentality thing is that, you know, come four o'clock around there, my day is over. I don't care. I'm not going to check it. I'm not going to think about it on my phone. I don't have any chat software, no no Gmail, no Outlook, none of that. If someone wants to get a hold of me, they have to call me, and I've never been called for any job. I started that policy uh, a couple jobs back, and it stopped a lot of the nonsense. Uh, stop, stopped a lot of me. Oh, I'd hear a ding. Oh, oh, what's going on? Who's deploying what? And just check it real quick. Just check it real quick. Just check it real quick. Stop that. I got my life back. <laughs> so that's another thing that I would recommend just from a general perspective. Now, from a delivering and being productive standpoint, what I would highly recommend is if you can, it's a little different depending on, you know, your whole situation, right? You're not, you may not be like me, right? I, 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 it's just me in a five bedroom house. I, I have the space to have a home office, right? Like not everyone's, not everyone's in that position, but if you could set up a small little corner, even, um, 
even if it's in like your living room a little desk in the corner where that's where you work that's all you do there is that is your working table this is so when i sit here this is where i work right and say same mentality setting that up so that you are in the mentality that this is this is where work is done and avoiding other distractions so part of the issues that happen with people who start working remote is they they try to take advantage and not in a bad way but just make the most out of things in the sense of um all of a sudden they're like oh i'm just gonna sit by the pool and work and you know stuff like that and they find out they don't get too much work done and they start having issues you you're still working there's still a level of responsibility that as an adult is expected and and to be honest like that's the big fear of companies the big fear of companies is that at the end of the day they're paying you to do a job and then you're at home you got netflix on you're you're maybe having a beer <laughs> i'm trying to think of the worst thing in, in the company's mind and you're not doing anything right and then and then you know you go to stand up and you message them back and they're like yeah yeah i ran into an issue um but I think I'm going to do it today and the next day you work, right? That's the big fear in a lot of companies' minds about why they can't have you work, working remote because they, they feel like, you know, traditionally, they're, I think it's incorrect, and I think it's usually pretty easy to know who's doing what. Like, I, I can tell you that any team I've ever been on who has been remote, even if I was in-house, I knew which ones were the lazy ones and which ones were the good ones, you know? Um, and it, it's always very easy to, like, you, you just know these things, right? And it's the same if you're in the office, right? Uh, just because you're in the office doesn't mean you're not going to dick around. There's plenty of people that do absolutely nothing except they just they clock in at 7, they clock out at 5, and, you know, they might get a good 30 minutes in. But, hey, that, everyone's got to do their thing. So you want to have your own separate space where you're getting work done. And that's not to say that you can't get up and go, go elsewhere, right? But generally speaking, I, I work every single day in the same spot because it's it is where I work. It's a mentality shift, right? I try to keep it somewhat clean also. I'm not the cleanest guy in the world, but I do find that clutter in the immediate environment starts to distract me. And that's part part of it is being focused on the task at hand. Now, another thing about working remote that you want to make sure you do is you want to over communicate. This is a little bit hard for some of us. Uh, it's a little easier digitally. So I hop on calls about God, maybe three, four, five times a day where I just have a quick question, uh, you know, quick question, question mark. Uh, all right, cool. And I'll sh send them a video chat, right? Whatever you're using, you're using Teams, you're using Google Chat, you're using Skype, God help you. Yeah, whatever it is that you're using, um, you send a video chat over Slack, right? Uh, and then you just hop on and talk. I find that that face-to-face -face conversation is much better than, than text. I, I hate messaging things i'd much rather hop on a call for about five minutes and have that face you know that quote unquote face to face conversation which brings, brings me to my next point so when you're working remote you want to have your webcam on especially if you're working re remote long term and you want to voice your opinion on things the the, the um thing that you can fall the trap you can fall into very easily is you know you're not seen you're not heard thus you're not de delivering value I want people to know that I'm a real person, you know, like that's, that's the goal. And having the webcam on when we're in these meetings for, you know, I have 30 people on my team now, uh, 30 people having my webcam on and speaking up when I have an opinion about things and trying to share and trying to the joke and all that sort of stuff that lets people know I'm here. That lets people know who Dylan is like, and then you start building that, that, um, reputation with these people and your, your teammates, because so often there's so many developers who are just like, I'm turning the webcam off. I'm not doing anything. This and that. Now, does that, what does that take? Does it take you a second to be more presentable? Sure. Um, you know, I, I don't consider myself super presentable. I, for work, I work in shorts and I have a, a, a PWC t-shirt that I spent $8 on that I wear and I ordered four of them and or five of them and I wear a different one every day. That's it. I work in a t-shirt that has my company's logo and I I go and I I show up and I, you know, I speak. I don't do my hair like this this I got out of the shower, right? This same way I look. You don't need to be super over the top. 
And some people are worried that, oh, if I put the webcam on, I got to be super presentable. No, not the case. But you do want to have that face-to-face -face contact because it's going to help grow those relationships. It's going to let people know you're, you're real and work together. Now, another thing is that you're, you're going to need to be aggressive with as a as a developer with making sure that you if you're stuck you reach out so often people are so afraid to ask for help even in real life that over chat it's even harder and so you want to reach out and ask for help don't assume anybody's going to show up because the last thing you want is just to be twiddling your thumbs for two days in any role this dog's about to get beat. Uh, the people, I'm recording over here, Gator. No, uh, they're, they're good puppies. But you want to make sure that you're asking for help and that you are getting it. If you don't get a message back, shoot another message 15, 20, 30 minutes later, whatever it is. Follow up with somebody else. Don't just sit there and wait because it's not a good look and it's not productive, right? Um, you know, my rule of thumb is if I'm stuck on something about 15, if I'm really being aggressive 30 minutes, if I'm stuck, I ask for help. I'll ask a couple of people for help. I said, listen, man, uh, this is what I tried. This ain't working. And then I might spend 30 minutes to an hour with a colleague going through something. You know, it's okay to ask for help. And, you know, you're a team, right? This is all about being a better team. Most of us aren't working remote solo. We're usually working on some part of the team, if we're, even if we're not software engineering. But you want to connect still. And, you know, if you need help, you need help. Uh, talk to your teammates and work through it and have your sort of place of business right where you do your stuff and you'll find out you're very successful with this now for those of you who want to transition to remote right because i imagine i've already had a couple friends call me that know i work remote that are working remote for their first time and it, it's like as it's how can i explain this if you've never had like sugar before you and you never knew how good like candy was you're like now you had candy and you're like yo dog how do i get more candy like <laughs> how do i get so in this case you want to get more remote the first thing you have to do is make sure you do a good job right who's gonna say yeah you can transition to re full remote or part-time remote if you did a shitty job nobody right doesn't make any sense why would they um now the next thing that you need to consider is do you really want full remote i can tell you right now that uh i love working full remote but being single and working full remote is really hard at times. I um, I stay busy on my projects and I have my dogs and whatnot. But in terms of in-person social interaction, this is something a lot of people need. I don't need it as much. It's a rare occasion. I feel like a little bit like, man, I wish there's somebody hanging out. I hang out with my buddies more often than I, I have in the past. But these are real things that a lot of people who are a little bit more um, need that social energy. I've had other people say, God, I hate working remote and it blows my mind. I'm like, keep that to yourself. I'm trying to do this for life, you know, um, but they need that. They need that social interaction. And so it may not be for you, but if it is, the thing that I would advise you is not to try and go and secure full remote. What I would say is try and secure one to two days a week. Start there. See if you can do that. And now is a great time to have that conversation where you say, you know what, Bob, you know what, Mary, whatever you're, you're going to insert generic manager uh, name. I really am feeling like I'm being more productive. You can see from here that my workload has done well. I've really, it's really helped with things because, you know, I can, I can run errands and I sort of work my schedule around a little bit better. I, I'd like to say, you know, I'd like to, when all this is over, do Tuesdays and Thursdays and bring that up, bring that up now, sort of paint the stage and, when things come back and they're starting to bring people back in the office, say, hold, hold up, Bob. Hold up, Bob. Remember that conversation we had? Let's let's start on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then you've already sort of set the stage, if you will, right? These are the things that I think will help you transition more easily into a, a partial remote job and being successful at full remote. So keep that in mind. With that all being said, guys, I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're staying healthy. I hope you're staying uh, positive, and I hope you're staying employed. I know, unfortunately, that's not the case for everybody. People's hours are being cut back. It's not just it's not just service workers. I've had um, some buddies who work at consulting companies tell me about how a lot of their clients are pausing 
anything that you can do to immediately st uh, stop spending money, a lot of people are doing that. They're pausing the contracts, and all of a sudden, they're having your 40 hours a week go down 32, asking people to take their paid vacation, um, asking some people to take unpaid vacation if they don't have that, right? And it's sort of everyone's sort of trying to find this healthy balance of keeping people employed and, um, you know, some, some companies can do these sort of measures, some can't. So I hope, I hope whatever your case is, is that you're trying to build up that war chest. You're, you're sort of trying to stay safe, stay healthy, stay, stay, uh, under, have a roof over your head, um, some food in, in the, the fridge, all that sort of stuff. I wish you all the best. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. I'm on that road to a hundred thousand, really trying to get that, get that uh, silver play button up on the wall over there. And uh, don't forget to check out my courses and uh, there are links to those in the description below. See you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my latest course, the 100 front end interview questions challenge to make sure that you ace those front end interviews. Smash that like and subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.